This is the top of the second highest mountain pass in Colorado. So if you want to do some research, you can figure out where I am. Then it's a windy one, so sorry about that. But if you do come up here, don't bring the family sedan. You'll have a bad time. <laughs> Forerunner's been doing just fine. Uh, just been taking it slow, but you definitely want, you definitely want high clearance for sure. It's pretty rocky on this side. And it's beautiful. It's gorgeous the whole way up. The views are just stellar. I haven't seen anything that works with the large format camera yet. But the problem is, is most of these mountain passes, there's not a lot of places to pull off. And the main viewpoints are, they're good, but not that I don't want to burn some film on in the middle of a really high wind area with a large format camera that basically is like a big kite. But it works on digital just fine. So that's what I've been shooting. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful day. I picked a great day to do this. There's clouds, so it's not just burning sun the whole time. There's a lot of dynamic light all over the mountains. And the top of where I am here, you just have awesome panoramic views all over. You know, I'm right at the point where it's about to go down the other side of this mountain. So I got views on the, both sides. It's just absolutely beautiful. With any luck, I'm gonna finish this trail up. Hope it isn't too rough going down. And as long as it isn't, that should leave me plenty of time left in the day. It's about two o'clock right now, but that'll leave me a handful of hours yet to go try to find some more things to shoot before sunset. So that's kind of the plan. Awesome view though. Just absolutely just stunning. For the experienced off-road driver, these mountain passes in the San Juans can be a fun way to spend an afternoon and see the sights, but they can also be an absolute nightmare with the wrong conditions and weather. I would be doing you a disservice if I left you with the impression that these trails are easy. Indeed, some are less technical than others, but all of these rugged passes demand respect. Either you will pay them that respect, or they will take it. There were parts that definitely pushed my forerunner. And in truth, I was probably one of the least capable vehicles I saw on those trails. And if you want my honest assessment, I probably won't be doing any of those passes again without modifications to my truck. Stay safe out there. Sorry about all the noise right next to a creek here. It's got some falls in it, so it's gonna be kind of noisy. But what I've got is a four by five set up on this creek here, and it's just, the color is just amazing. It's gotta have a bunch of iron deposits in it or something I would imagine, cause it's just rust colored river and it's absolutely beautiful. I totally love it. Unlike anything I'd have ever seen anywhere else, you know? So of course I had to set this up and shoot it on large format because I just absolutely adore it. I shot some digitals the other day when I was scouting it out and quickly became the top priority of my, on my list. So I set up on a vertical composition with my Nikon, uh, 90 millimeter F4.5 Nikkor lens. And what I'm trying to frame is I got some falls in the foreground here with a bunch of water that's kind of pooling up here. And then it leads your eye up into the composition here. And in the background, there's a little bit of a rock wall that kind of goes off into the distance, it curves around. Uh, and there's, there's some fall color in here. There's some evergreen trees, just lots of pretty things to look at. I absolutely love this. I think it's just fantastic. Works really well as a vertical composition. So the thing is, I think it's all about shutter speed on this one. I've shot two exposures, actually bracketed, but I ended up doing F22, half a second, and then F22, one second. And the reason for that is because I'm trying to make sure I don't blur the water too much. I don't want it completely just smooth. I want, I want a little bit of texture and interest in that water. So I actually would have preferred to get about a quarter second if I could have. That looked really good when I was shooting digitals. The problem is I have completely overcast skies. It's not very bright in here. And I'm a little concerned about trying to do F16, although it probably would turn out just fine. There is some depth of field issues here that I'm trying to work with. So I've applied some front tilt here, trying to make sure I get these foreground rocks that are really close to my camera. I want those to kind of be the visual focal point where your eye goes first. And I want that absolutely pin sharp. And then as it goes up into the composition, I don't want it to fall soft. So F22 is about the most I was willing to compromise. I actually would have preferred to shoot this about F32. That's usually my go-to, but F22 is kind of where a lot of these lenses are pretty much optimized for optical sharpness anyway. So I think that's fine. I'm just not going to get quite as extent of a depth of field, but I don't think it's going to be noticeable at all. So I think that might be it. I had half a mind to try a polarizer. 
There's a little bit of shine on some of these wet rocks out here. I thought about trying to polarize that off, but again, that's gonna set my shutter times even longer than I'm comfortable with. So I think I'm gonna have to compromise on that. If I could have all my birthdays and Christmases all at once though, there's a stick in this composition I wish I could get rid of. I actually looked for a way to cross the river to get out there and pull it out of the composition, but I, I can't get over there without getting totally soaked. So I'm just gonna have to live with it, I guess. Some pretty rough rapids in here. I don't wanna get hurt trying to improve the composition. And yeah, I'm happy to have that one in the bag. So I'm really stoked about this one. I think this is probably my favorite composition I've shot so far. So I really hope it turns out, but in any case, let's take a look at a film on a light table and see what I got. So it was a good thing that I did bracket these exposures because one second ended up being way too long and I was starting to lose detail in the foreground. The half second was a lot darker in the shadows, but it did retain a lot more highlight detail. But as the sun grew higher in the sky and there was more ambient light available, I was able to get that quarter second exposure that I was after. But as you can see, that exposure suffered from some pretty serious technical issues. Most noticeably, I somehow managed to capture an image of my cable release. But as embarrassing as that is, I was actually more concerned about the light leak at the top of the composition. I've been seeing that with a couple of my Provia holders. Seems I'm going to have to replace one or two of them. And finally, I took a last exposure with my Lee Landscape Circular Polarizer and stopped down to f16 and a third, shot at one half a second to compensate for the light loss. And despite my concern in the field, f16 seemed to produce perfectly good sharpness and detail throughout, or at least any lack of sharpness was nothing I was too concerned about. Ultimately, I'm happy I took this exposure, and it is my favorite, of course, because it's a good balance of shutter speed and it has no technical flaws. But I'm a little unsure about how far I went with the polarizer. And I hesitate to say, but on the previous image, I think I kind of like a little bit of the glare and highlights on the rocks. I kind of wish I would have backed the polarizer off a little bit and gone somewhere in between. But this pair of exposures illustrates the difference in shutter speed really well, between a quarter second and a half second. And I hate to say, but I still like the quarter second a little better. Of course, the one I processed was the obvious choice, the one with the polarizer. And all things considered, I still thought it turned out to be a really beautiful shot. But as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And here's the final image. Later that night, the clouds rolled in, the temperatures dropped, and it began to snow and rain. And I woke up the next morning with some truly beautiful conditions. This is another roadside composition, so apologies for the road noise. There isn't much I can do about it. But as I was driving by on the highway, there was this, it's just this super cool looking building. I don't know what it was used for. I imagine it has something to do with mining. Uh, there's some old infrastructure in the background that's long since fell apart. It was probably 
transporting you know some sort of thing up to the top of this building and then there's a couple chutes in the front that uh, I, I can imagine anyway was probably there to load carts or some sort of vehicle but it's pretty clearly owned by the Colorado Department of Transportation because there's a big fat ugly sign on the front of it that says no trespassing so uh, I actually tried to orbit the building you know and see if I could go this way or that way to try to make that less obvious in the frame but there isn't much I could do about it so just embrace it seems like a lot of photos always have some sort of warts that you gotta embrace, and I guess this one is the sign, so. I like it anyway, so I'm shooting it. So I've set up the Chamonix 4x5 in a landscape orientation, but I haven't quite centered the building. The crest of the, the roof crest of the building, the point of it, is kind of more right in the center of the frame, but I've kind of put more of the building on one side than the other. I don't, I don't know why, but it just seemed like that looked better when I was scouting it, so that's what I've done. There's some really nice fall colors and, the, and, you know, some aspens behind it that look really pretty. And I thought about shooting this on color, but I, eh, I think I'm going to stick to black and white on it because that's kind of what I had envisioned when I pulled up. So T-Max 100 is what I shot. Two sheets of that, one for backup, and those were one second at F32 is what I shot them at. I metered at the top of this roof here. There's this, where is it, right there? I metered off of that. There's this tin roof that's got this brighter than middle gray, but it's a gray tone. Uh, I stuck that a stop and a third above middle. And I am pushing the exposure a little bit because it always seems like my T-Max negatives come back a little underdeveloped. So I'm pushing the exposure just a little bit more. But yeah, super cool subject. I love the fact that the windows are broken out in front of it. I don't know if that's just from aging over time or if that's from vandals, but I'm gonna go with the first one. I'm gonna assume that that's from aging, but it's a super cool detail. I had to use quite a bit of front rise on this because I was trying to keep my camera level so that my trees weren't, you know, converging or diverging. But I had to use a ton of front rise in order to get this building all in. I mean, nothing on the front of it is straight. It's from a construction age where I don't know if they had the ability to build them completely square, but nothing on it is square. So I'm not too worried about the lines on the building. They can kind of be wherever. So yeah, a lot of front rise, a little bit of front tilt too, to make sure that my plane of focus travels along in front of the building. I want to make sure that the stilt on the front are sharp, but then also the very rough crest. I want to make sure that point's nice and sharp too. The background, I think there'll be enough depth of field that that'll be sharp enough. It, it's okay if there's a little bit of focus fall off on the trees in the background, because this is all about the building. There is a road that switches back and goes up here. So there's this embankment up here. You can't see the road because I'm looking up at it. All you see is gravel. But once in a while, there's a car or a truck that goes by that's just tall enough that you can see it in the composition. So I had to make sure I could time that so I could get an exposure before having a car drive in there. So there's a little bit of timing challenges there. Anyway, this was something that was kind of on my mind as I was planning this trip. I thought it'd be kind of cool to find, you know, I know there's a ton of mining infrastructure here. It'd be cool to find some old derelict buildings and shoot some black and white negatives. So I'm glad to have done that. So here's that exposure. And as always, let me know down in the comments what you think. Here are those two T-Max exposures. If I invert this real quick so we can see what's going on. Not a whole lot of difference between the two. They're identical exposures. So just straightforward doubles. Fortunately, no technical surprises here. Everything turned out good. I was happy with the sharpness and the detail. And I think this image turned out great. But you can let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And here's my completed image. Thanks as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you can let me know by hitting that thumbs up button down below. Next up will be my Zion series. So if you want to make sure you don't miss that, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button while you're down there. Special thanks to my Patreon patrons. And if you'd like to know more about how you can throw in your support to help me make more videos like this one, make sure you check out those links in the description. Take care, and I'll see you in Zion.